So today I am on another quest, but this quest is to figure out who is the best prospect in the UFC right now. This is in every division. I tried to only pick two out of each division just to make sure it's fair. I'm not having a 30 person tier list. So or probably only around 16 people, maybe even I think one less, but we have 16 prospects in here. You have to be outside the top five to be considered for this list. Otherwise, I'll just have a bunch of top five fighters in here and that will be boring. So I want to get some extra names in there who need more name value, who I think need more attention to them is a better term or way to describe it. So I do have about 15 fighters in here who are outside the top five, who I will be ranking S through D tier. We're doing this MMA guru style to give him credit, but let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Starting off with, we have Jalen Turner. Now Jalen Turner, I think has a lot of potential in the lightweight division, but right now he's mainly struggling with the grappling. His grappling defense isn't bad. It's a good grappling defense, but it's not enough to get it done at lightweight. And when it comes to prospects, I want them to pose a significant threat to their champion. I want them to have something in there where I can see them having an advantage or maybe at least be even with their champion. And when it comes to grappling, even though it's Islam Mahashev, it's going to be pretty much impossible to be able to outgrapple that man at lightweight. Him having, I would say, a hole in his game at grappling puts him lower on the list, but I can't put him at C tier because his hands are elite. I think he has some of the best striking at lightweight. I even forgot to put him in my lightweight ranking, striking ranking tier list video. So I think he does pose a threat on the feet to Islam, but when it comes to grappling, it's a big hole in this game. So I can't put him at A tier and I definitely can't put him at S tier. So I think B tier is where he'll fit the best. So B tier for Jalen Turner. Moving on up next, we have Song Yadong, or as I call him, Song Yading Dong. Now, you can definitely put Song Yadong at B tier, but I want to put him at A tier. I think I'm going to put him at A tier. He's only 25 years old. This is a very, very young fighter. He's been in the UFC for, I don't know, I think four or five years now, maybe even less than that, or maybe, I don't know. But he's been in the UFC for a long time, believe it at that. He's been in here for a while, and he's rapidly improving his game. His grappling defense is, I would say, elite. We saw that against Ricky Simone. He has really good takedown defense, and his striking is improving, improving. And he actually had a really competitive fight with Corey Sanhagen, who's in the top five, who is the striking guy at bantamweight so i think song Dong can hang with the best and as time goes on he will improve he would definitely be algebra something on the feet but the grappling i don't know honestly he's probably the biggest threat to algebra with his takedown defense and then his striking on top of that he would be his biggest all-time threat i think at bantamweight so i have to put him in a tier would he beat algebra i don't know and so that's down the line somewhere but a tier, I think, is a great fit for Song Yidong. Moving on, up next, we have Manel Cap. I can't put Manel Cap at B tier. I just can't do it. So I have to put him at, at C tier because he does have some losses against potential contenders. Like he lost to Pantoja, who is now fighting for the belt. I get that. But he lost to Pantoja, and he also lost to Mateus Nicolau, who just lost to Roy Val. So I don't know... I can really credit much to him at flyweight, even though he did kind of get robbed against Mateus and Nicolau. I'm pretty certain of that one. I think he won the third round, which would have won him the entire fight. But having that loss on his record and having those two losses on his record against Pantoja and Nicolau in the UFC really make it kind of stinky, but he is explosive. He does have very good striking. So I don't think he is D tier worthy at all because of his potential and growth. So I think C tier fits him the best. If only, if only he didn't lose Mateus Nicolau, he would probably be B tier, which he didn't really lose. So I'm not putting him B tier, but I'm putting him at C tier because of the fact that he did make it somewhat close to Nicolau. He allowed himself to get robbed in that fight. So C tier is where he's going to be. I think that's pretty, pretty, pretty easily, not pretty easily, but it, you definitely debate. Maybe he's like C plus. So C plus, C tier for Manel Cap. Moving on up next, we have 
Tom Aspinall. Now, this guy is top five. I know it. He's top five in the rankings right now. But I put him in there because he just doesn't have those fights against the top five guys at, at heavyweight. Heavyweight's a bit of a different calling because outside of it, there's really nobody. But Tom Aspinall has pretty much all the makings to be a future UFC champ. Once John Jones leaves, I think he'll be the guy to take that belt. He pretty much has it all. He has the, the boxing, he has the striking, he has the grappling, he has the jiu-jitsu. He has whatever you want at heavyweight and he's pretty much elite at every aspect of MMA. And for a heavyweight, that's rare. It never really ever happens. So Tom Aspinall is an easy A tier. He is top five though, so I put him in here just because he doesn't have those, he hasn't fought any of the top guys. So I think he can kind of be that thread the line top five sort of. So I think he can thread the line to be that top five prospect that you can just kind of put in here. You can justify putting him in this, this tier list ranking. So Tom Aspinall, he has it all at heavyweight. I think he'll be a future champ. So A tier, easy. S tier, S tier might be where he should be at, but I'm putting him in A tier because I want to deduct some points because he is top five and this is a prospect list. So kind of isn't a prospect, but he is one in his own right. But that's all we have for Tom Aspinall for now. Moving on up next, we have Carlos Olberg. Now, Carlos Olberg does have that loss to Kennedy Nizachukwu, so that does duck him some points. But he, he has been tearing up the light heavyweight division so far. His striking is elite. We don't know how good his grappling defense is just yet, so that also ducks him some points. But I think he has a lot of potential at light heavyweight to really make some waves eventually. So, so A tier, no, his resume is not there yet. And he also has that loss. B tier because of the loss. So I think C tier is where he'll be at because of the questions we have for him. And can he pose a threat to anybody at the top five of light heavyweight? I think C tier fits him well. Not D tier just yet because he doesn't, like, there's not no hope for him. I think D tier is like you have no hope of ever being good at the UFC ever. You're just kind of a big name. Moving on up next, we have Jailton Almeida. Now, Jailton Almeida can be A tier for sure. I don't think I'm going to put him at A tier though. I think I'm going to put him at B tier because we just don't know how good he is against another grappler. He's only fought strikers at light heavyweight. So A tier, no. A tier, no. I don't think he's A tier just yet. I'm going to put him at B tier, but he does have a ton of potential. His grappling skill is great and heavyweights can't grapple. So that already deducts him some points. You know, until you fight a Curtis Blades or a Tom Aspinall or John Jones, somebody who can grapple at heavyweight, you just can't be A tier, I don't think. Then again, there is Tom Aspinall who hasn't really fought any grapplers as well, but he did just dismantle, I mean, dismantle Volkov and nobody really dismantles Volkov like that on the ground, especially. So I think B tier for Jelton Almeida. You can definitely argue him to be A tier, but I think I'm gonna put him at B tier. I'll put him ahead of Jalen Turner. This list goes from left to right, who I think is the best and who is the worst in terms of prospects in their in their their rank in their tier. So so Jalen Almeida definitely B tier. I think he fits there very well. B plus to put him on a higher rating. Moving on up next, we have. Joe Pfeiffer. Now, I'm really high on Joe Pfeiffer. I'm extremely high on him as a prospect because he can grapple at middleweight, which is an advantage, and he has heat in his hands. And he just, I mean, was a complete savage and just destroyed the career of Gerald Mearshart. He KO'd him in their fight and then went on to beat Gerald Mearshart in his own game at grappling in a grappling match, and he beat Gerald Mearshart which is just savage in his own right. So if he can grapple and strike at middleweight, you're going to be successful no matter what. But I think B tier for now, because we obviously we don't know how he would fare against some of the top guys. But I think as a prospect, he is one of the most under known and one of the better prospects who people don't know. I can't put him in A tier because of obviously his resume, but B tier, I think, is for sure where I'm going to sit out with him. He is really underrated, and nobody's really talking about him that much. Be like Joe Pfeiffer. Moving on, up next, we have Drickus Duplessis. I'm putting Drickus at C tier. I'm putting him at C tier. I am really confident in putting him at C tier as well. Middleweight is also pretty shit. Like, it is a very shit division. However, 
Drickus, people always kind of say this about him is that he fights or he strikes like he's drunk, which is true. He does kind of do that. And it's middle way. He's only beat Brunson, who Brunson shouldn't even be in, in the rankings the way he strikes. It's, I mean, abysmal. And I think he'll get dismantled quite easily by Izzy. I don't think he poses much of a chance. I guess you can put him at B tier. I guess you can. But I think C tier is where he'll lie because I don't think he can even beat Robert Whitaker to say that at least. I don't think he is truly that top elite prospect talent that you see at middleweight where you're like, oh my God, this guy versus Izzy is going to be crazy. I don't get that vibe from Drigas Duplessis. I think he needs some more improvement in his game for me to be like, okay, Drick is definitely A tier or B tier. He needs a lot more. His grappling though was really underrated and nobody gives him credit for that. He does have very, very good grappling. Didn't really show it off too well against Brad Tavares, but he does have good grappling. At KSW, I believe was the promotion he was in before the UFC. He did have really good grappling. He beat Roberto Soldich as well. So C tier for Drickus Duplessis. I think that's pretty pretty fair in my opinion moving on up next we have let me find somebody patty the baddie pimblet d tier easy patty the baddie pimblet is not going to be good in the ufc he couldn't beat jared gordon and jared gordon is pretty mid let's be honest here he's not the most elite fighter and he can't strike he can't strike at all he's a prospect because of name value only he's probably the worst prospect hype wise that we've ever gotten ever his grappling is actually what carries him but do i think he'll be successful no because he couldn't implement his grappling against jaron gordon fair play he did break his leg in that matchup but come on bro you made jaron gordon a close fight even though you got gifted the decision against him come on bro you're fighting like him versus a jim miller him versus anybody in the top I mean, the rankings at lightweight is going to be a nightmare matchup for him besides maybe a Tony Ferguson, but will he ever get that fight? I don't know. But I mean, anybody at lightweight is going to be a difficult matchup and I don't see him going very far at all in the UFC. He's my only D tier prospect. I'm pretty much spilling the beans with that already. I'm spoiling it for you. He's my only D tier prospect. And I think I'm really justified in him being a D tier. I just kind of think he has to be there. You can't really convince me otherwise moving on up next we have ian gary i'm so happy for ian gary for him to be on a tier on this list ian gary has some of the best hands of welterweight we watched him against um song Kanan. i think that was his name he has really good hands he did get rocked and dropped in that matchup as well but he has potential to be a future champ Will he beat Leon Edwards? I don't know. Will he succeed in the welterweight division? I think so. I think he has true potential to be at least top five and to be in the UFC for a very long time. He's also very young. I forget how old he is, but I know he's in his mid to early 20s, I believe. I might be wrong on that. He's in his 20s. We'll leave it at that. He's still a very young prospect, so he has time to improve. And we have seen him improve. From his debut till now, he's definitely improved his hands and how he throws strikes and his reads and what he sets up. He demolished D-Rod, which is a great win, a great, great win. Nobody demolishes D-Rod and he did it like he was nothing. So Ian Gary, definitely a tier. He has true potential in the 120 division. I'll put him behind Song Yedong for now because Song Yedong just is already kind of there. He's already there in his talent. Ian Gary, we haven't seen him against the top five or the top 10 fighters, which we have with Song Yedong. Moving on up next, we have Ilya Topuria. Ilya Topuria is an also an easy A tier. Um, I can't put him in S tier only because we don't know how he would do against a Max Holloway or even a Volk. You know, until you fight Max Holloway right now, you just don't know where these prospects are at in terms of their skill and their striking and everything. But Ilya Tapura has it all. He has the grappling. He's really underrated in his submission game. He has a few guillotines and I think a Darce choke in his early pro career. Like he does have very good underrated grappling and nobody ever gives him credit for that because he has such heat in his hands and he has great body shots and strikes like that. So Ilya Tapura, I think is easy A tier 
just not S tier yet because we haven't seen him fight Volk or, or Holloway, which I guess I can't hold him too hard for that because of, you know, if he fights Volk or Holloway, he would be top five and he would be successful as a prospect. But I coming as but him being a champ in the future, I don't know. Volk is just so hard to beat and Holloway is just so hard to beat. So some of the ways kind of have it hard in this list because of you have to get the, to that test of Volk and Holloway, mainly just Holloway. And without that, you're not a prospect anymore as soon as you fight them. So I think A tier would be fitting for the Tapiria. You could definitely argue him to be S tier. A plus for the Tapiria. Moving on up next, we have Amir Albazi. Now he just beat Kaikara France by robbery to some people by me uh, i still don't think it was a robbery but amir albazi got the win even though i think he definitely should have lost and that kind of puts him at b tier if he couldn't really beat kai Kao or france how is he going to beat anybody at, at in the championship level you know he he was made to look human by kai Kao or france and so i don't know how you would do against the rest of the flyweights like maybe manel cap have a chance against amir albazi who knows it just is there's too many questions still about him. He is, I think, undefeated. No, I think he has one loss. So he he does have really a really good record. But I am worried about him in his near future. Again, I want to put these guys higher. And it's kind of a more opinionated list. You know, you can obviously, obviously change a lot of these guys around based on your own opinion. But this is my opinion, pretty much. Amir Bazdi B tier, I think, just with that Kai Kara French performance it doesn't it keeps him away from a tier it just does but moving on to the last guy who i think is the best prospect inside the ufc right now and it's the best chance of being champion tom aspinall no i'm kidding i think it's actually jack della madalena this guy is probably the most underrated guy at welterweight and nobody is giving him any credit this guy has such good heat in his hands the only question is his grappling, but right now I'm going off the prediction that his grappling will be solid against Sean Brady, which is his main big question. But I think he has such good boxing technique and striking technique in general that's going to lead him to be successful at welterweight for years to come. And I think he will be the next champ. If he dismantles Sean Brady and then fights like Bilal Muhammad and dismantles him, he might have the best chance of being the next champion and beating Leon Edwards. Granted, if he's still champ by that time, because it will be a long time before we will see Jack Della getting a title shot. But Jack Della is that guy. He definitely is that guy at welterweight and nobody talks about him. He is my number one best prospect in the UFC right now. You can definitely argue Tom Aspinall, but he kind of is a given because of, you know, heavyweight division. But I think he is definitely better than some of these guys. I think he would beat Ian Gary. I think he would probably outbox Ian Gary for three rounds or maybe five rounds, depending on what how you feel. And beating Ian Gary right now is kind of like beating a top, a potential top five guy. So Jack Della Maddalena is my number one prospect. If you agree or even disagree, let me know in the comments. I like reading them. Also, I do stream the cards. I will be streaming to UFC 289 this week. So tune in for that. But that's all I have for you. For now, peace.